This is the story of Lotor's secret weapon. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. On the planet Doom, King Zarkon was meeting with his son, Prince Lotor. Zarkon was not pleased. I've had enough of your failures, Lotor. Quit sending robots to destroy Voltron. I want you personally to lead our troops to victory. You mean really lead from up front? Of course, a prince doesn't lead from the rear. Now go and plan your attack. Desperate for help, Lotor went to Hagar the Witch. She led him to a bubbling tank. Lotor, I think you'll like this. That thing in a tank, what is it? It grew from a lock of your hair and lots of very special magic. Watch! Lotor looked on, amazed, as the creature grew arms, legs, a head, a face. Hagar, uh, he looks just like me. That's because he's your clone, your exact duplicate, but twice as strong and twice as evil. He'll lead your troops to victory, and King Zarkon will never know it isn't you. Prince Lotor nodded slowly. Hagar, I think this clone is just what I need. Along with my new robies, he'll guarantee victory over Voltron. Several days later, on the planet Aris, Koran was working in the control center of the castle. As he looked over his computer, the lights suddenly flickered and dimmed. The Voltron team came running, led by Pidge. What's going on? Did we forget to pay our light bill? Koran pointed to a huge shape on his monitor. One of Lotor's row beasts is coming up the river toward the castle. Its magnetic force field is draining our power. Lance turned to Keith. We can't go after the row beast in our lions because the force field would block their power too. I'm afraid you're right, Lance, but I've got an idea. I'll take one of our water sleds and swim up river. Maybe I can sneak up on the row beast underwater. On a cliff overlooking the river, Prince Lotor watched the Robies from his command ship. The Voltron team must know I'm here. When they come out, my clone will make short work of them, and the planet Aris will be mine. Then, Father, you will bow down to me! The Robies advanced up the river. Suddenly, it stopped and opened its gigantic claws, sending bolts of energy to knock out the castle's power sheaths. On top of the Robies stood Lotor's clone. Why don't they come out? I'm ready to battle all of them. Meanwhile, beneath the river, Keith approached the Robies and attached underwater mines to its legs. Now I'll set the timer and get out of here fast. But Lotor's clone noticed Keith swimming to shore. He fired his sword, missing by inches. Keith climbed out of the water and faced the clone. Lotor! I thought you always sent a row beast to do your dirty work. Keith and Lotor's clone faced off, weapons drawn. Dodging and darting, they traded vicious blows. Finally, the clone, showing superhuman strength and determination, forced Keith to the ground. This is the end for you, weakling! Suddenly, there was a deafening explosion. Keith's underwater mines had gone off. A gigantic wave surged ashore, knocking Keith out of the clone's grasp and driving the Robeast to its knees. The moment the Robeast fell, Koran and the others at the castle noticed a surge of power. The force field is weakening. We may still have a chance. Lance peered at the monitor. It looks like Keith may need help. I'll take the other water sled and go after him. At his post in the command ship, Lotor received a call from Hagar. Prince Lotor, everyone here on the planet Doom is watching your battle with interest, especially your father. My father's watching? Then tell the clone to attack and end it now. 
Ah, but Lotor, you can tell him yourself. Concentrate very hard, and your two minds will be as one. Prince Lotor sent a thought message to the clone. You must win this fight at once. If you won't, the Robeast will. And I'll have him take care of you, too. The clone shouted up at his twin. You sit where it's safe and tell a real soldier how to fight? I won't listen to you, Lotor. Keep listening, puzzled. Lotor's talking to Lotor? That can't be, unless he's a clone. That would explain it. The Robeast climbed to its feet. Lotor's clone yelled at it. Out of my way, you clumsy heap of metal! The clone fired his sword at the Robeast, who knocked it away. In the ship, Lotor glared down at his clone. That's the last order you'll ever disobey! Robeast, destroy him! With deadly accuracy, the Robeast focused laser beams on Lotor's clone. A moment later, the android clone had been turned to ashes. Then the Robeast started toward Keith. Once again, laser beams shot out, sending dirt and boulders flying. Keith jumped aside, but was half buried in the rubble. At the castle, Koran turned to the others. Keith is down. Prepare to launch the lions at once. The Robeast's force field has weakened enough to let you through. Pitch, Punk, and Princess Allura ran to their ships. A moment later, the three lions came hurtling out of their caves. At the river, Keith struggled to his feet. As he did, he noticed a figure in diving gear emerge from the water. Lance, am I glad to see you. Come on, Keith, let's get out of here. We can take my water sled. They dove to the riverbed and sped off, with the Robeast lumbering along in pursuit. Just then, the three lions appeared on the horizon. They banked, then went into attack formation. Dodging laser fire, the lions sent proton missiles whistling by the Robeast. As the lions regrouped for another attack, two more shapes came knifing through the clouds. Keith and Lance had retrieved their lions and were ready to join the battle. Keith radioed the others. Okay, team, it's time to get down to business. Let's form Voltron. Activate interlock. Dynatherms connected. Infracells up. Mega thrusters are go. The lions flew into position. Form feet and legs. Form arms and body. And I'll form the head. Soon, a familiar shape came shooting out of the sky. Voltron, defender of the universe. Keith spoke into his headset. Prepare to energize lion heads. Detach and attack. The four lion heads flew off Voltron's hands and feet. They pierced the Robe's shoulders and chest. Then returned to their places on the body of Voltron. And now, form Blazing Sword. Voltron stepped forward and swung the shining weapon. Damaged beyond repair, the Robeast crumpled slowly to the ground. From his post on the cliff, Prince Lotor shook his head in dismay. It's Hagar's fault. She and her idiotic clone. I should have known. The universe just isn't big enough for two Lotors. He reached for his controls, and the command ship lifted off the ground. As it disappeared into the sky, the Voltron team cheered. Koran radioed his congratulations from the castle. Well done, team. Because of you, Eros is safe once again. Lance Grimm. Well, Keith, I guess Lotor will have to come up with a new secret weapon. That's right, but he'll never defeat our secret weapon, Voltron, Defender of the Universe!